Kizan Baburao Hazar pronunciation, born the 15th of June 1937, popularly known as Anna Hazar pronunciation, is an Indian social activist who led movements to promote rural development, increase government transparency, and investigate and punish corruption in public life. In addition to organizing and encouraging grassroots movements, Hazar frequently conducted hunger strikes to further his causes, a tactic reminiscent, to many, of the work of Mohandas K. Gandhi. Hazare also contributed to the development and structuring of Religan Siti, a village in Parnar Taluka of Ahmednagar district, Maharashtra, India. He was awarded the Padma Bhushan, the third highest civilian award, by the Government of India in 1992 for his efforts in establishing this village as a model for others. Hazare started a hunger strike on 5 April 2011 to exert pressure on the Indian government to enact a stringent anti corruption law. The Lokpal Bill, 2011, is envisaged in the Jan Lokpal Bill, for the institution of an ombudsman with the power to deal with corruption in public places. The fast led to nationwide protests in support. The fast ended on 9 April 2011, a day after the government accepted Hazare's demands. The government issued a Gazette notification on the formation of a joint committee, consisting of government and civil society representatives, to draft the legislation. Foreign Policy magazine named him among top 100 global thinkers in 2011. Also in 2011, Hazare was ranked as the most influential person in Mumbai by a national daily newspaper. He has faced criticism for his authoritarian views on justice, including death as punishment for corrupt public officials and his alleged support for forced vasectomies as a method of family planning. <laughs> Early life Kizan Baburao Hazare was born on the 15th of June 1937. Some sources say the 15th of January 1940 in Bingar, near Ahmednagar. He was the eldest son of Baburao Hazare and Laxmi Bai. He has two sisters and four brothers. He later adopted the name Anna, which in Marathi means elder person or father. His father worked as an unskilled laborer in Ayurveda ashram pharmacy and struggled to support the family financially. In time, the family moved to their ancestral village of Religan Sidi, where they owned a small amount of agricultural land. A relative took on the burden of providing Kizan with an education, taking him to Mumbai because the village had no primary school. The relative became unable financially to continue the support and Kizan's schooling ended in the standard seventh grade. His siblings never attended school. He started selling flowers at the Dadar railway station in Mumbai and eventually managed to own two flower shops in the city. He also became involved in vigilantism, joining groups who acted to prevent landlords' thugs from intimidating the poor out of their shelter. <laughs> <laughs> Military service Hazare was drafted in the Indian Army in April 1960, where he initially worked as an army truck driver and was later attested as a soldier. He undertook army training at Aurangabad. During the Indo Pakistani War of 1965, Hazare was posted at the border in the Kem Karan sector. He was the sole survivor of an enemy attack variously claimed to have been a bomb, an aerial assault, and an exchange of fire at the border while he was driving a truck. The experiences of wartime, coupled with the poverty from which he had come, affected him. He considered suicide at one point but turned instead to pondering the meaning of life and death. He said of the truck attack, It sent me thinking. I felt that God wanted me to stay alive for some reason. I was reborn in the battlefield of Kem Karan. And I decided to dedicate my new life to serving people. At a book stand in New Delhi railway station, he came across Swami Vivekananda's booklet, Call to the Youth for Nation Building, which inspired him to think deeper. He spent his spare time reading the works of Swami Vivekananda, Gandhi, and Vinoba Bhavi. In a blog post, Hazare expressed his views on Kashmir by saying that it was his active conviction that Kashmir is an integral part of India, and that if required once again for service, he would remain ready to take part in war against Pakistan. During his 15-year career in the army 1960-75, Anna Hazare was posted at several locations, including Punjab Indo-Pak War 1965, Nagaland, Bombay 1971, and Jammu 1974. During the Indo-Pak War, Hazare survived a road crash while driving for the army. 
He interpreted his survival as a further sign that his life was intended to be dedicated to service. He had another escape in Nagaland, where one night, underground Naga rebels attacked his post and killed all the inmates. He had a miraculous escape as he had gone out to return nature's call and hence turned out to be the lone survivor. Official records show that he was honorably discharged in 1975 after completing 12 years of service. Topic: <laughs> Transformation of Religion Sidi Hazare returned to Religan Sidi, a village then described by Satpathi and Mehta as, "...one of the many villages of India plagued by acute poverty, deprivation, a fragile ecosystem, neglect and hopelessness." Although most of the villagers owned some land, cultivation was extremely difficult due to the rocky ground preventing retention of the monsoon rains. This situation was worsened by gradual environmental deterioration as trees were cut down, erosion spread and droughts were also experienced. The shortage of water also led to disease from unsanitary conditions and water reuse for multiple purposes. The economy of the village had become reliant on the illegal manufacture and sale of alcohol, a product on which many of the villagers had become dependent. Many inhabitants borrowed from moneylenders to survive, paying monthly interest rates of as much as 10%. Crime and violence, including domestic violence had become commonplace, while education and employment opportunities were poor. Hazare was relatively wealthy because of the gratuity from his army service. He set about using that money to restore a run-down, vandalized village temple as a focal point for the community. Some were able to respond with small financial donations but many other villagers, particularly among the elderly, donated their labor in a process that became known as Shramdan. Some youths also became involved in the work and these he organized into a Tarun Mandal youth association. One of the works of Vivekananda which he had read was called to the youth for nation building. Topic: <inaudible> <inaudible> Prohibition of alcohol. Hazare and the youth group decided to take up the issue of alcoholism to drive a process of reform. At a meeting conducted in the temple, the villagers resolved to close down liquor dens and ban alcohol in the village. Since these resolutions were made in the temple, they became, in a sense, religious commitments. Over 30 liquor brewing units voluntarily closed their establishments. Those who did not succumb to social pressure were forced to close their businesses when the youth group smashed their premises. The owners could not complain as their businesses were illegal. Once three drunken villagers were tied to pillars and then flogged, personally by Hazare with his army belt. He justified this punishment by stating that rural India was a harsh society, and that doesn't a mother administer bitter medicines to a sick child when she knows that the medicine can cure her child? The child may not like the medicine, but the mother does it only because she cares for the child. The alcoholics were punished so that their families would not be destroyed. Hazare appealed to the government of Maharashtra to pass a law whereby prohibition would come into force in a village if 25% of the women in the village demanded it. In 2009 the state government amended the Bombay Prohibition Act, 1949 to reflect this, it was decided to ban the sale of tobacco, cigarettes, and beedies an unfiltered cigarette where the tobacco is rolled in tondu also known as diaspiras melanoxalon leaves instead of paper in the village. To implement this resolution, the youth group performed a unique, holy, ceremony 22 years ago. The festival of holy is celebrated as a symbolic burning of evil. The youth group brought all the tobacco, cigarettes, and beaties from the shops in the village and burnt them in a holy fire. Tobacco, cigarettes, or beaties are no longer sold. <laughs> <laughs> Grain Bank In 1980, Hazare started the grain bank at the temple, with the objective of providing food security to needy farmers during times of drought or crop failure. Rich farmers, or those with surplus grain production, could donate a quintal to the bank. In times of need, farmers could borrow the grain, but they had to return the amount of grain they borrowed, plus an additional quintal as an interest. This ensured that nobody in the village ever went hungry or had to borrow money to buy grain. This also prevented distress sales of grain at lower prices at harvest time. Watershed Development Program 
Religion City is located in the foothills, so Hazare persuaded villagers to construct a watershed embankment and associated works to stop water and allow it to percolate and increase the ground water level and improve irrigation in the area. These efforts solved the problem of water scarcity in the village and made irrigation possible. Cultivation of water intensive crops like sugarcane was banned. Crops such as pulses, oilseeds, and certain cash crops with low water requirements replaced them. The farmers started growing high yield varieties and changed cropping pattern. Hazare has helped farmers of more than 70 villages in drought prone regions in the state of Maharashtra since 1975. When Hazare came to Religan City in 1975, only 70 acres (28 hectares) of land was irrigated. Hazare converted it into about 2,500 acres (1,000 hectares). Topic: Education. In 1932, Religan City got its first formal school, a single classroom primary school. In 1962, the villagers added more classrooms through community volunteer efforts. By 1971, out of an estimated population of 1,209, only 30.43% were literate 72 women and 290 men. Boys moved to the nearby towns of Schurer and Parner to pursue higher education, but girls were limited to primary education. Hazare, along with the youth of Religan City, worked to increase literacy rates and education levels. In 1976 they started a pre-school and a high school in 1979. The villagers formed a charitable trust, the San Yadav Baba Shikshan Prasarik Mandal, which was registered in 1979. <laughs> <laughs> Removal of untouchability The social barriers and discrimination that existed due to the caste system in India have been largely eliminated by religion Sidi villagers. It was Hazare's moral leadership that motivated and inspired the villagers to shun untouchability and caste discrimination. Marriages of Dalits are held as part of community marriage program together with those of other castes. The Dalits have become integrated into the social and economic life of the village. The upper caste villagers built houses for the lower caste Dalits by Shramdan and helped to repay their loans. Gram Sabha The Gandhian philosophy on rural development considers the Gram Sabha as an important democratic institution for collective decision making in the villages of India. Hazare campaigned between 1998 and 2006 for amending the Gram Sabha Act, so that villagers have a say in the village's development. The state government initially refused, but eventually gave in to public pressure. It became mandatory to seek the sanction of the Gram Sabha an assembly of all village adults, and not just the few elected representatives in the Gram Panchayat for expenditures on development works in the village. Topic: Activism. Topic: <inaudible> Anti-corruption protests in Maharashtra. In 1991, Hazare launched the Brashtachar Virodhi Jan Andolan (BVJA) People's Movement Against Corruption, a popular movement to fight against corruption in Railagaon City. In the same year he protested against the collusion between 40 forest officials and timber merchants. This protest resulted in the transfer and suspension of these officials. In May 1997 Hazare protested alleged malpractice in the purchase of powerlooms by the Vasantrao Naik Bathia Vimuk JHTRA Governor P. C. Alexander. On 4 November 1997 Golap filed a defamation suit against Hazare for accusing him of corruption. He was arrested in April 1998 and was released on a personal bond of 5,000 rupees $70. On 9 September 1998 Hazare was imprisoned in the Yarrawada jail to serve a three-month sentence mandated by the Mumbai Metropolitan Court. The sentencing caused leaders of all political parties except the BJP and the Shiv Sena to support him. Later, due to public protests, the government of Maharashtra ordered his release. Hazare wrote a letter to then Chief Minister Manohar Joshi demanding Golap's removal for his role in alleged malpractices in the Awami Merchant Bank. 
Golap resigned from the cabinet on the 27th of April 1999. In 2003, corruption charges were raised by Hazare against four NCP ministers of the Congress NCP government. He started his fast unto death on the 9th of August 2003. He ended his fast on the 17th of August 2003 after then Chief Minister Sushil Kumar Shin formed a one-man commission headed by the retired Justice P B Sawant to probe his charges. The P. B. Sawant Commission report, submitted on 23 February 2005, indicted Shurshdatta Jain, Nawab Malik, and Padmasan Patil. The report exonerated Vijay Kumar Gavit. Jain and Malik resigned from the cabinet in March 2005. Three trusts headed by Anna Hazare were also indicted in the P. B. Sawant Commission report. 220,000 rupees $3,060 spent by the Hind Swaraj Trust for Anna Hazare's birthday celebrations was concluded by the commission as illegal and amounting to a corrupt practice, though Abhay Farodia, an industrialist subsequently donated 248,000 rupees $3,450 to the trust for that purpose. The setting apart of 11 acres of its land by the trust in favor of the Zilla Parishad without obtaining permission from the charity commissioner was concluded as a case of maladministration. The commission also concluded that the maintenance of accounts of the Brashtachar Virodhi Janandolan Trust after 10 November 2001 had not been according to the rules and 46,374 rupees $650 spent by the San Yadav Baba Shikshan Prasarak Mandal Trust for renovating a temple thwarted its object of imparting secular education. Right to Information Movement In the early 2000s Hazare led a movement in Maharashtra state which forced the state government to enact a revised Maharashtra Right to Information Act. This act was later considered as the base document for the Right to Information Act 2005, RTI, enacted by the Union government. It also ensured that the President of India ascended to this new act. On 20 July 2006 the Union Cabinet amended the Right to Information Act 2005 to exclude the file noting by the government officials from its purview. Hazare began his fast unto death on 9 August 2006 in Alandi against the proposed amendment. He ended his fast on 19 August 2006, after the government agreed to change its earlier decision. Regulation of Transfers and Prevention of Delay in Discharge of Official Duties Act Before 2006 in the state of Maharashtra, honest government officers were transferred to other places according to ministerial wish, while some corrupt and favoured officials stayed put for decades. Anna fought hard for a law whereby a government servant must clear a file within a specified time and that transfers must take place only after three years. After many years of Anna's relentless efforts, on 25 May 2006 Maharashtra issued a notification announcing the Prevention of Delay in Discharge of Official Duties Act 2006. This act provided for disciplinary action against officials who move files slowly and enabled monitoring of officials who overstay a post, and for involvement in a corrupt nexus. This act mandated the government to effect transfers of all government officers and employees, except class 4 workers, no sooner and no later than three years, except in emergency or exceptional circumstances. Maharashtra was the first state to have introduced such an act. However, like others, this law was not fully followed. <laughs> <laughs> Campaign against liquor from food grains Article 47 of India's constitution commits the state to raise the standard of living, improve public health and prohibit the consumption of intoxicating drinks and drugs injurious to health. In 2007 Maharashtra rolled out a grain-based liquor policy aimed to encourage production of liquor from food grain in light of the rising demand for spirits, used for industrial purposes and liquor. It issued 36 licenses for distilleries for making alcohol from food grains. Anna Hazare opposed the government's policy to promote making liquor from food grains. He argued that Maharashtra had to import food and referring to food grains observed that promoting producing liquor from food grains was inappropriate. One of the state ministers Laxman Dobel said in his speech that those opposing the decision to allow use of food grains for the production of liquor were anti-farmers and that opponents should be beaten with sugarcane sticks. 
Hazare began fasting at Shirdi, but on 21 March 2010 the government promised to review the policy and Anna ended his five-day fast. But the government later granted 36 licenses and grants of 10 rupees 14 US per liter of alcohol to politicians or their sons who were engaged in making alcohol from food grains. Recipients included Amit and Diraj Deshmukh, sons of Union Heavy Industries Minister Vilasrao Deshmukh, Bharatiya Janata Party leader Gopinath Mun's daughter Pankaja Palway and her husband Charadatta Palway, sons-in-law of P.V. Narasimha Rao and Rajya Sabha MP Govindrao Adik. The government approved the licenses despite stiff opposition from the planning and finance departments, saying there was a huge demand in other countries for distilled spirits compared to that of molasses. Anna sued Maharashtra over the policy in the Nagpur bench of the Bombay High Court. On 20 August 2009 Maharashtra stopped the policy. However, distilleries sanctioned before that date and those who started production within two years of sanction were entitled for subsidies. On 5 May 2011 court refused to hear the suit, saying, Not before me, this is a court of law, not a court of justice, as a reason for not hearing the plea. A Maharashtra principal secretary, C.S. Sangeet Rao, stated that no law existed to scrap these licenses. <laughs> <laughs> Lokpal Bill movement In 2011, Hazare participated in the Satyagraha movement campaigning for the passing a stronger anti-corruption Lokpal Ombudsman bill in the Indian parliament. Known as the Jan Lokpal Bill, People's Ombudsman Bill, this had been drafted by N. Santosh Hegde, a former Justice of the Supreme Court of India and Lokayukta of Karnataka, Prashant Bhushan and Arvind Kejriwal a social activist. The draft incorporated more stringent provisions and gave wider power to the Lokpal than the government's 2010 draft. These included placing the Prime Minister within the ambit of the proposed Lokpal's powers. Topic. Hunger strike Hazare began an indefinite fast on 5 April 2011 at Jantar Mantar in Delhi as part of the campaign to form a joint committee comprising government and civil society representatives. He wanted this committee to draft a bill that had more stringent penal provisions and gave more independence to the Lokpal and Lokayuktas ombudsmen in the states. The fast came after his demand was rejected by the Prime Minister, Manmohan Singh. Hazare said, I will fast until Jan Lokpal bill is passed. The movement attracted attention in the media, and thousands of supporters. Almost 150 people reportedly joined Hazare in his fast. Social activists, including Mehta Potkar, Arvind Kejriwal, former IPS officer Kiran Bedi, and Jayaprakash Narayan lent their support. People showed support in social media. In addition to spiritual leaders Sri Sri Ravi Shankar, Swami Ramdev, Swami Agnavesh, the former Indian cricketer Kapil Dev and many other celebrities supported him. Hazare decided that he would not allow any politician to sit with him. The protesters rejected Uma Bharti, Om Prakash Shatala and others when they visited the protest. On 6 April 2011 Sharad Pawar resigned from the group of ministers formed for reviewing the 2010 draft. Protests spread to Bangalore, Mumbai, Chennai, Ahmedabad, Guwahati, Shillong, Aizawl and other cities. On 8 April 2011 the government accepted the movement's demands. On 9 April it issued a notification in the Gazette of India on formation of a joint committee. It accepted the formula that it should be co-chaired by a politician and social activist. The notification stated, the joint drafting committee shall consist of five nominee ministers of the Government of India and five nominees of the civil society. The five nominee ministers of the Government of India are Pranab Mukherjee, Union Minister of Finance, P. Chidambaram, Union Minister of Home Affairs, M. Virapa Moili, Union Minister of Law and Justice, Kapil Sibyl, Union Minister of Human Resource and Development and Minister of Communication and Information Technology and Salman Kurshid, Union Minister of Water Resources and Minister of Minority Affairs. The five non-politician nominees were Anna Hazare, N. Santosh Hegde, Shanti Bhushan Senior Advocate, Prashant Bhushan, Advocate and Arvind Kejriwal. On the morning of 9 April 2011 Hazare ended his 98-hour hunger strike. He addressed the people and set a deadline of 15 August 2011 to pass the bill. 
He said that real fight begins now. We have a lot of struggle ahead of us in drafting the new legislation, we have shown the world in just five days that we are united for the cause of the nation. The youth power in this movement is a sign of hope. Hazare said that if the bill did not pass he would call for a mass nationwide agitation. He called his movement as, second struggle for independence, and he will continue the fight. Hazare threatened on 28 July 2012 to proceed with his fast unto death from the next day on the Jan Lokpal bill issue. He also stated that country's future is not safe in the hands of Congress and BJP and he would campaign in the coming elections for those with clean background. On the third day of his indefinite fast, Anna stated that he will not talk even to the Prime Minister till his demands are met. On 2 August 2012 Hazare said that there was nothing wrong with forming a new political party but, he would neither join the party nor contest elections. Team and Anna have decided to end their indefinite fast on 3 August 2012 at 5 p.m. after which the team will announce their decision to enter politics. <laughs> Draft bill During the meeting of the Joint Drafting Committee on 30 May 2011, the Union government members opposed the inclusion of the Prime Minister, Higher Judiciary and the acts of the MPs under the purview of the Janlokpal in the draft bill. On 31 May, Mukherjee sent a letter to the chief ministers of all states and party leaders seeking their opinion on six contentious issues, including whether to bring the Prime Minister and judges of India's Supreme Court and High Courts under the law's purview. But the civil society members of the drafting committee considered that keeping them out would be a violation of the United Nations Convention Against Corruption. Hazare and other civil society members decided to boycott the 6 June 2011 drafting committee meeting to protest the forcible eviction of Swami Ramdev and his followers by the Delhi police from Ramlila Maidan on 5 June 2011, while they were on a hunger strike against black money and corruption and doubting the government's seriousness. On 6 June 2011, the civil society members members wrote to Mukherjee, explaining reasons for their absence and also asking government to go public on the major issues. They also decided to attend only future meetings that were telecast live. On 8 June at Rajhat, describing his movement as the second freedom struggle, Hazare criticized the government for trying to discredit the drafting committee and threatened to go on indefinite fast again from 16 August 2011 if the Lokpal bill had not passed. He also criticized the government for putting hurdles in front of the bill and for maligning the civil society members. Topic: <inaudible> <inaudible> Indefinite fast. On the 28th of July 2011, the Union Cabinet approved a draft of the Lokpal bill, which kept the Prime Minister, judiciary, and lower bureaucracy out of the Ombudsman's ambit. Hazare rejected the government version by describing it as cruel joke," and wrote a letter to Singh announcing his decision to begin an indefinite fast from 16 August 2011 at Jantar Mantar, if the government introduced its own version of the bill without taking suggestions from civil society members. Hazare wrote, Why are you government sending the wrong draft? We have faith in parliament. But first send the right draft, our agitation is against government, not parliament. The government has overlooked many points. How will it fight corruption by excluding government employees, CBI and Prime Minister from the Lokpal's purview? We were told that both the drafts would be sent to the cabinet. But only the government's draft was sent. This is a deceitful government. They are lying. How will they run the country? Now I have no trust in this government. If it is really serious about fighting corruption, why is it not bringing government employees and CBI under Lokpal? Within 24 hours of Cabinet's endorsement of a weak Lokpal bill, over 10,000 people from across the country sent faxes directly to the government demanding a stronger bill. The Mumbai Taxi Men's Union, comprising over 30,000 taxi drivers supported Hazare's fast by keeping all taxis off the roads on 16 August. Lawyers of Allahabad High Court described the government proposal as against the national interest and pledged their support to Hazare by hunger striking at Allahabad on 16 August. 
On 30 July Vishwa Hindu Parishad supported his fast by saying movement for an effective anti-corruption ombudsman needed the people's backing. On 1 August 2011, public interest litigation was filed in the Supreme Court of India by Hemant Patil, a Maharashtra-based social worker and businessman, to restrain Hazare, alleging that Hazare's demands were unconstitutional and amounted to interference in the legislative process. Topic. Arrest and aftermath On 16 August 2011, Hazare was arrested, four hours before the planned indefinite hunger strike. Rajan Bhagat, spokesman for Delhi Police, said police arrested Hazare for illegally gathering in a Delhi park to begin his hunger strike, claiming that Hazare refused to meet police conditions for allowing the protest. The conditions included restricting the fast to three days and the number of protesters to 5,000. Later in the afternoon, Hazare refused bail. The magistrate dispatched him to Tihar jail for seven days. After announcements by Prashant Bhushan, local television, and social media sites including Facebook, thousands marched in support from the India Gate to Jantar Mantar. Media reported that about 1,300 supporters were detained in Delhi, including Arvind Kejriwal, Shanti Bhushan, Kiran Bedi and Manish Sisodia. Other reports other protests with people courting arrests in different parts of the country. Opposition parties came out against the arrest, likening the government action to the emergency imposed in the country in 1975. Both houses of parliament adjourned over the issue. After four hours in detention he was released unconditionally on a request by the police, but refused to leave Tihar jail. He demanded unconditional permission to fast at Ramlila Maidan ground and refused to leave. Hazare continued his fast inside the jail. After his arrest, Hazare received support from people across the country. There were reports of nearly 570 demonstrations and protests by Anna supporters across the country. Due to the millions of protesters nationwide, the government allowed him to begin a public hunger strike of 15 days. After talks with public authorities, Hazare decided to hold his protest at Ramlila Maidan, New Delhi. On 20 August Hazare left the Tihar jail for the Ramlila grounds. Hazare promised reporters he would fight to the last breath until the government gets his team's Jan Lokpal bill passed in this session of parliament, which ends on 8 September. <laughs> <laughs> Fast at Ramlila Maidan On 20 August 2011 thousands came to show their support for Hazare, while his advisers made television appearances to rally public support and defend themselves against criticism that their protest campaign and refusal to compromise is undermining India's parliamentary process. The National Campaign for People's Right to Information NCPRI condemned Hazare's deadline for passing the bill as undermining democracy, which operates by holding wide-ranging consultations and discussions, allowing for dissent and evolving a consensus. He has the right to protest and dissent. But nobody can claim it as an absolute right and deny the right of dissent to others." The Congress Party confirmed that Maharashtra Additional Chief Secretary Home Umesh Chandra Sarangi who has a history of mediating between Hazare and officials was meeting with him again to find points of consensus and defuse the situation." On 21 August, tens of thousands watched Hazare as he sat on an elevated platform. It was reported that Hazare at that point had lost more than seven pounds since beginning his fast. Despite this he stated, I will not withdraw my hunger strike until the Jan Lokpal bill is passed in the parliament. I can die but I will not bend. Hazare ended his fast on 28 August, after the Lokpal bill passed unanimously. He was admitted to Medanta Medicity, Gurgaon for post-fast care. He had lost 7.5 kg and was very dehydrated after the 288-hour fast. <laughs> I am Anna Chant Within a few days of Anna Hazare's first fast demanding a strong Lokpal on 5 April 2011, supporters started a campaign known as, I am Anna Hazare, which was similar to the, We are all Khalid said, campaign from the Egyptian uprising. 
During Anna Hazare's second fast, his topi, the cap which became synonymous with Anna Hazare, became almost a fashion statement. Sales of the topis hit an all-time high. Kieran Betty recommended that the I am Anna topi be displayed whenever someone asked for a bribe. <laughs> fast on MMRDA ground On 27 December 2011, Hazare began a three-day hunger strike at MMRDA grounds, Bandra Kurla complex, to demand a stronger Lokpal bill than was in debate. Hazare ended the fast on 28 December, after his doctors said that his kidneys might fail if he continued. Before reaching the venue, Anna paid tribute to Mahatma Gandhi at Juhu Beach. On his way to a rally with several thousand people, he took two and a half hours to reach the ground, passing through Santa Cruz, Tulip Star Hotel, Midibai College, SV Road, Vile Parle, Car and Bandra Highway. A pill petition filed against the fast was turned down by the Karnataka High Court. A judge noted that there was no public interest in the petition. Topic: <inaudible> <inaudible> Electoral Reform Movement. In 2011, Hazare demanded an amendment to the electoral law to incorporate the option of none of the above in the electronic voting machines during the Indian elections. The none of the above nota is a ballot option that allows an electorate to indicate disapproval of all of the candidates in an electoral system, in case of non-availability of any candidate of his choice, as his right to reject. Soon, the Chief Election Commissioner of India Shahabuddin Yakub Qureshi supported Hazare's demand for the electoral reforms. On 31 March 2013 Hazare started Jantantra Yatra from the city of Amritsar. He is expecting to address various issues, including electoral reforms such as the right to reject a candidate. Topic: <inaudible> <inaudible> Protest against atrocities against Swami Ramdev and his supporters. On the 8th of June 2011, Anna Hazare and thousands of his supporters fasted from 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. at Rajhat to protest against the midnight crackdown of the 5th of June by the Delhi police on Swami Ramdev's fast at Ramlila ground protests. Anna Hazare held the Prime Minister of India responsible for the atrocities and termed the police action as an attempt to stifle democracy. According to one of Hazare's young supporters, the large presence of youths at the protest was due to his use of nonviolent protest, similar to Gandhi. On 9 August 2013, Anna's office announced his anti corruption organization Brashtachar Virodhi Jan Andolan is no longer tackling corruption issues at a personal or social level. In an email circulated to India against corruption's membership, the veteran Gandhian's office has clarified that Anna is now focused on Janlokpal, right to reject, right to recall, farmers' problems, change in education in system. <laughs> 2015 land acquisition ordinance protest In February 2015, he protested for two days at Jantar Mantar in Delhi against Ordinance on the Land Acquisition, Rehabilitation and Resettlement Act, 2013. <laughs> <laughs> Controversies and criticism <laughs> Alleged link with Rashtriya Swayamsevak Sangh Hazare has been criticized for being an agent of Rashtriya Swayam Sevak Sangh RSS, a right-wing Hindu body. According to Digvijay Singh a senior leader of the Indian National Congress, the entire crusade of 2011 Indian anti-corruption movement was planned by RSS in which Plan A was Baba Ramdev while Plan B was Anna Hazare. Their basic job was to disturb national security. Further Singh had charged Hazare for having links with late RSS leader Nanaji Deshmukh with whom he worked as a secretary. Asterisk Hazare denied any such associations. <laughs> <laughs> Acting as proxy for political parties India's Open magazine editorialised that it was nonsense. To say Hazare's anti-corruption movement of 2011-12 was apolitical. 
The op-ed went on to say that the purpose of the movement was that so long as the Congress party was kept out of power corrupt politicians of any other party could be elected to parliament. The example of Ajay Shatala now convicted for corruption was cited as, "...in effect, Anna and his team are campaigning for Ajay Shatala effectively the first candidate put up for election by the India Against Corruption movement." Views on Narendra Modi and Nitish Kumar In a press conference in April 2011, Hazare praised Narendra Modi, the Chief Minister of Gujarat and Nitish Kumar, Chief Minister of Bihar for their efforts on rural development, saying that other chief ministers should emulate them. Subsequently, Modi wrote an open letter to him, hailing him as a Gandhian anti-corruption activist while Digvijay Singh criticized him for his comment. In May 2011, during his visit to Gujarat, Hazare changed his view and criticized Modi for rampant corruption. He urged Modi to appoint a Lokayukta. He also commented that the media had projected an incorrect image of vibrant Gujarat. Subsequently, Hazare declared that Modi is not a suitable candidate for the position of Prime Minister for not doing enough to curb corruption and his unwillingness to set up a Lokayukta in Gujarat. He has even questioned his secular credentials. Topic. Accusations of corruption The government of the state of Maharashtra instituted a commission of inquiry under Justice P. B. Sawant in September 2003 to inquire into allegations of corruption against several people, including four ministers in the state as well as the Hind Swaraj Trust, headed by Hazare. The commission submitted its report on the 22nd of February 2005, indicting the trust for corruptly spending 220,000 rupees on Hazare's birthday celebrations. Two days ahead of Hazare's Lokpal fast, the Indian National Congress attacked him, alleging that the moral core of Hazare has been ripped apart. By the Justice P. B. Sawant Commission, Hazare's lawyer Milan Pawar responded that the commission had remarked about irregularities in the accounts, but had not held him guilty of any corrupt practices. Pawar said that on 16 June 1998, a celebration was organized to congratulate Hazare on winning an award from a U.S.-based NGO and it coincided with his 61st birthday. The trust spent 218,000 rupees for the function. Abhay Farodia, a Pune-based industrialist, who took the initiative to organize this function donated an amount of 248,950 rupees to the trust by check soon afterwards. Hazare dared the government to file a first information report for against him to prove the charges. Topic: <laughs> Accusation of being anti-democratic and anti-Dalit. An article written in Kolkata Telegraph by Ramchandra Guha stated that environmental journalist Mukul Sharma claimed that Hazare forced the Dalit families in Religan City to adopt a vegetarian diet, and that those who violated the decree were tied to a post and flogged. Mukul Sharma also found that no panchayat elections have been held in the village for the past two decades, and that no campaigning was allowed during state and national elections. Upon Hazare's instructions, Dalit columnist Chandrabhan Prasad opined that Hazare's anti corruption movement rejected representative democracy and alleged that it was an upper caste uprising. He also claimed that centralizing powers in Lokapal, which was a non elected entity, was anti democratic. Dalit activist Kancha Ilaya commented in a similar fashion that the Anna movement is an anti-social justice, Manuvadi movement. The Dalits, tribals, OBCs and minorities have nothing to do with it. We oppose it." Activist Anoop Kerry claimed that, "...the language, symbols used by the movement clearly reflects its upper caste Hindu nature, a very right-wing Hindu patriotism is being used to get the entire country against corruption. And as a Dalit, I have a problem with it." There was also an allegation that an RTI activist was denied permission to protest by having a fast unto death at Religan City, the Grama Sabha stating that the reason was that only Hazare can hold such fasts in his village. Activist Udit Raj was denied permission to protest against Hazare, whom he claimed was against parliamentary processes. Raj warned that succumbing to Hazare's demands would set a dangerous trend rendering the backward classes more vulnerable. He claimed that mass mobilizations coerced the government into a set of solutions, 
against constitutional processes could be used against affirmative action and threaten democracy. Later, it came to light that poor Dalits had been paid up to 200 rupees each to shout slogans against Hazar, although the organizers denied it. Some protesters said that they had been told that it was a pro Anna protest, but felt cheated after realizing that it was against Hazar. Accusation of being anti-Muslim On the 22nd of August 2011 writer-actor Arundhati Roy accused Hazare in a newspaper article of being non-secular. She questioned his secular credentials, pointing out his support for Raj Thackeray's Marathi Manu's xenophobia and has praised the development model of Gujarat CM who oversaw the 2002 pogrom against Muslims. The website of the newspaper published many responses to her article and these were mostly critical of her views. Activist Mehta Potkar criticized Roy, saying that her views were misplaced. Hazare in the past stood in firm opposition to the Shiv Sena and BJP governments in Maharashtra. Activist and writer Ashgar Ali Engineer in an EPW article on communalism and communal violence reported, the Shiv Sena is also facing serious problems from the social activist Anna Hazare who has accused its ministers of corruption and demanded their resignation. The SSBJP government is facing serious corruption charges and is greatly worried. The Anna Hazare movement began in late November when he went on fast against the corrupt practices of the Shiv Sena ministers. The BJP initially supported the Hazare movement and now its deputy chief minister Gopinath Mund is also under a cloud. Initially the Hazare movement had created a rift between the Shiv Sena and the BJP but with Gopinath Mund himself under a cloud, both may close ranks. The Hazare movement has certainly posed a great challenge for the Saffron government at the end of 1996. Hazare was accused of working at the behest of RSS and BJP, and against Muslims by cleric Bukhari of the Jama Masjid. Bukhari was subsequently criticized for being a royal imam and for claiming that his personal views represented the view of ordinary Muslims. Topic: <inaudible> <inaudible> Conspiracy to murder Hazare. Hazare exposed corruption in cooperative sugar factories in Maharashtra, including one controlled by Dr. Padamzin Bajirao Patil, a member of parliament of 15th Lok Sabha and higher-ranking leader of Nationalist Congress Party from Osmanabad. Patil was accused in the 2006 murder case of Congress leader Pawanraje Nimabalkar. The conspiracy to kill Hazare was exposed when Parismal Jain, an accused in the Nimbalkar murder case, in his written confession before a magistrate said that Patil had paid him 3 million rupees to murder Nimbalkar, and also offered him supari contract killing sum to kill Anna Hazare. After this written confession, Hazare appealed to the state government of Maharashtra to lodge a separate first information report for, against Patil but the government declined. On 26 September 2009 Hazare lodged his own complaint at Parner Police Station of Ahmednagar District in Maharashtra against Patil. Patil approached the High Court seeking anticipatory bail but on 14 October 2009, the Aurangabad bench of Bombay High Court rejected his application, observing that there was prima facie case against him. Padmasin Patil appealed to the Supreme Court of India losing again, on 6 November 2009. On of November 2009 Patil surrendered before the Sessions Court in Latour and was sent to judicial remand for 14 days. On 16 December 2009 the Aurangabad bench granted bail. As of 16 August 2011, the verdict is pending. As of December 2011, Hazare received Z plus security. Honours, <laughs> <laughs> awards and international recognition Topic film The Marathi film Mala Anna Vihache I Want to Become Anna is based on Hazare's work. The role of Hazare has been played by Arun Nalawade. Anna, a 2016 Indian Hindi language biographical film based on the life of Anna Hazare, directed and written by Shashank Udaparkar. Topic: <laughs> Personal life. Hazare is unmarried. 
He has lived in a small room attached to the San Yadavbaba temple in Religan City since 1975. On 16 April 2011, he declared his bank balance of 67,183 rupees and 1,500 rupees as money in hand. He owns 0.07 hectares of family land in Religan City, which is being used by his brothers. He donated for village use two other pieces of land donated to him by the Indian Army and by a villager. Writings Hazare, Anna, Ganesh Pangare, Vasudha Lakur Adarsh Gaon Yojana, Government Participation in a People's Programme, Ideal Village Project of the Government of Maharashtra. Hind Swaraj Trust. p. 95. Retrieved 20 August 2011. Hazare, Anna. My Village, My Sacred Land. New Delhi, CAPART. Hazare, Anna 1997. Railagown Sidi, A Veritable Transformation. Translated by B.S. Pensa. Religan Sidi Pariwar Precaution. Archived from the original on of May 2011. Retrieved 7 April 2011. Hazare, Anna 2007. Vada Hai Sangrasachi in Marathi. Pune, Signet Publications. See also Uprising 2011 India against corruption Hartle